that's like the weirdest thing ever to like stand and like you're awkwardly, I'm awkwardly being talked about and it's like, I guess it's all true because I wrote it at some point in my life, but um, so I'm Amber, like she said. I'm so glad you guys are all here with me today and um, sorry for the short technical delay. I'm gonna take um, accountability for that because I use the wrong kind of slides, I don't know. So um, anyway, I love to travel, I love to go places, I love to talk to people, but I'm actually from Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm just gonna start with that right there because I felt like I was like from some world traveler and I'm, I'm from Phoenix, I live like 20 minutes away. But today we're gonna talk about using the rules of improv um, to build better creative teams. Um, and through this presentation, my goal is by the time we're done today, you will have some tools to build more collaborative teams, uh, more creative teams, and that your teams will have more fun because that's my life goal too, is to have fun in everything that I do. So, first of all though, um, a couple more things about me because that wasn't enough. Um, first, I'm Amber, hey. Um, I've been practicing waving with my left hand so I could match um, Tom Hanks for like a week and a half now. I think that's the best presentation I've, preparation I've done for this talk. Um, so I'm a writer. I uh, co-own a creative agency called Amplitude Media, and we write words that sell stuff for people, um, or at least that's the goal. And um, I've spent the last four years here in Phoenix performing as a stand-up comedian, I'm an improv performer, and I've done some live storytelling. I'm kind of a stage whore, and, um, but in the best way possible. <laughs> um, I, love, I love talking to people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in large groups. Um, I also make amazing pancakes. It's a thing. Um, my best client meetings have been around my kitchen table, and I make cinnamon swirl pancakes with butter, um, I can't remember the name, buttermilk icy, croft, syrup, all of the things. Anyway. I swear I make it, I'm not making that up, even though it looked like I was making that up on the fly. Um, and even though this is an improv, this whole thing's about improv, I actually did prepare. I'm not making up this presentation. I'm also not a very good dancer. But I am inherently a creative person, I identify as such. Um, and I believe that everybody has the ability to be creative. I think some people think that if you're a creative person, it means you're a writer or an artist or a musician. Um, I'm two of the three. Um, I'm subpar at two of the three as well, most of the time. Um, most of my songs are uh, written on sta for stage to be funny and inappropriate, which is why I didn't bring my ukulele today. But I think people think the inside of my brain must look like this. And if you know creative people, you think that the inside of their brain looks like this. How many of you identify as being creative people? <sighs> How many of you didn't raise your hand? Raise your hand now. Okay, leave your hand up. How many of you identify as being creative people? We all have the ability to be creative. We all do, and that was a trick. It was a nasty, rotten trick. But by the end of today, I'm hoping that you all have that feeling that you have that ability too. Um, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. My brain doesn't usually look like this. In fact, it usually looks like this. This is my greatest fear after alligators, tornadoes, and trains which are all perfectly logical, rational fears when you live in Arizona. Um, as a writer, there's nothing scarier than the blank screen. As a performer, there's nothing scarier than blank index cards. And as a presenter, there's nothing worse than a PowerPoint presentation. My goal today is to make this as fun as possible. This is my most boring slide. I'm setting myself up for success is what I'm doing. Okay, so I, um, I believe that creativity is a muscle. And although it looks like I go to the gym on a regular basis, um, my creativity muscles are my strongest because I use them every day. Um, I used to be scared that my creative ideas would dry up because eventually they're gonna run out. We all start with only a certain number of ideas in our life and you can't have any more after that. That's a lie um, and it's supposed to be a joke but nobody laughed so that's okay. It's happened to me before. Um, I have four kids, it happens every day. Nobody laughs at my jokes. So um, creative, creativity comes in a lot of forms. It comes, I've seen some beautiful code that is some of the most creative things I've ever seen written. And um, I'm amazed and I'm in awe, but if you'd ask my, my engineer friends if they're creative, they'll say no. Um, I've seen some, br some super creative math stuff. Physics is one of my jams. 
um, and I don't understand it completely. I'm just in awe of it, and I love it. And I see some things that mean some things that people tell me that means. I'm like, this is the most creative thing I've ever seen in my life. And it's beautiful, um, but they would not identify as creative people. So we all have the ability to be creative. We all use creativity to solve problems, and that's what we're doing when we're creative is we're solving problems. Um, we're finding solutions. So we're going to start um, by learning some basic improv rules and exercises for strengthening your creative muscles. So we're going to the creativity gym, which is my favorite gym, um, after Jim Belushi. He's pretty funny. But um, so there are four rules in improv. And I talk really fast, um, even when I'm not talking to, f I don't know how many of you are there, like six of you. Um, so if I'm talking too fast, we'd be like, slow down. But I have a lot of things to get through, and I want to have some fun. So that's why I'm like, ah, and coffee. I've had a lot of coffee today. So the most basic rules of improv, the first one is what I'm sure everybody's heard, which is yes and. So when you're on stage or in a creative brainstorm, you say yes to anything that's offered to you. It's a gift. When somebody pulls something out of nothing, it's a gift. When they hand it to you, you accept it. Because if I brought you a box of chocolates, you wouldn't deny them, right? Even if you don't like chocolate, you would still accept it and take it and give it to somebody else, right? Um, otherwise, you're just rude. <laughs> and nobody wants to be rude, right? I, maybe some of you do. I'm just making assumptions. But the second rule is to listen, which is a lot harder than it looks. The third rule is there are no wrong answers, which is the best kind of test ever. When you're being creative and you're brainstorming, there are no wrong answers. Um, and number four is I've got your back. So you're on stage to support your team. You're in the room to support your team, whether it's your coworkers, whether it's your family, whether it's a client, whoever your team is, you're brainstorming to solve their problem, finding a creative solution, and you've got their back. So we're going to go over these in more detail so you don't have to write them all down right now. And if you don't write them down, I'll send you my slides because I have some really fun gifts and stuff um, and some other words that are important. But here's a bonus tip. And this isn't an improv tip. This is a life tip. Um, have fun. That's the number one rule that happens everywhere I go. It applies to life and improv. If you're not having fun, change what you're doing. Do something different. Um, but if you're not having fun in your creative brainstorming sessions, Change what you're doing. Change how you're doing it, because it should be fun. Creativity is fun. It shouldn't be painful. That's a lie. I might lie to you a couple times today, but I always catch myself. Creativity is sometimes painful. But it should be fun pain. I know how that sounds, and I'm just going to keep going. Um, so <coughs> the reason I got into improv is because I was doing stand-up comedy. And um, one of my club owners said, I think you'd be really good at improv. And I'm an attention whore, and so I said, okay, that sounds like fun. Um, I was working in an agency, and I wasn't having much fun in my creative life at the time because there were so many rules about how to be creative. And the rules were who had the good idea was who had been there the longest. <laughs> right? I hear some, some murmuring. Um, some other rules were um, we don't do that because we've done it before and it didn't work. Well, that was five years ago with a different client with a different tactic, so let's try it, let's try it again. Um, some other rules are, we don't know how this is going to turn out, so we're not going to take any risks. How many of you have done that? And it's like, the greatest things happen when you take the biggest risks. I'm looking at you two right there because of our conversation before this. Um, so I started, and, and to go back a year before that, I started doing stand-up because I'd moved to Phoenix and I didn't know anybody and I was kind of bored. And um, everybody gets stand-up comedy when it gets bored, right? Um, it's a longer story than that, but I'm trying to hurry. But um, my first time doing stand-up comedy, and I'm telling you the story because it has nothing to do with my slide deck, but it's funny, and sometimes that's good. So I was, I was nervously pacing backstage, and I was like, my nervous energy that I have all the time, but then I was about to perform for the first time, and this old comedian stops me, and he's like, I've not seen you here before. You know, have you, have you not been at this club? And I'm like, I've never been anywhere. This is my first time. And um, he's like... He looks at me dead in the eyes, and he's probably like 152 years old, and he um, puts both hands on my shoulders, and he leans in really close, and I can smell whiskey, and I can smell pot, and I can smell cigarettes, um, and I can smell that he had garlic for dinner and hadn't brushed his teeth. He was very close, and he leans in, and he says, 
I've done a lot of drugs in my life. <laughs> Full stop. Says nothing for 45 seconds at least. It was the longest 45 seconds of my life. I'm like, I don't know whether he's going to like just walk away, if he's going to try and kiss me, if he's going to, I don't know what's going to go on here. And I'm, I feel stuck. And he's like, there is no high like you'll feel when you get off that stage tonight. I'm like, oh, okay. That's a really cool, I, that's really cool. Like, thank you. He's like, I'm saying don't do drugs. <laughs> like, okay, Nancy Reagan, thank you very much. Um, but he was right. I got off that stage and I was like, I, I needed more. I needed that hit again. And it's um, become a glutton. I do, I chase that high, which is why I perform. However, I found that I can find that high with the right creativ creativity, with the right moment. And I can find that high when I'm in a room with a client and we have been working on a project for five weeks and we nail it when we say, this is your tagline. And it's three words that they've paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for. The most important three words they're gonna build in their company for the next 10 years at least. And I can say, that's when I get that high now because it's still creative and it's still creative energy and we've solved their problem. Um, anyway, it's about, when I switched from comedy to improv, it was more about the, less about the me and more about the we. And when I switched from comedy to improv is where I saw that my best creative ideas happened on stage with my friends when we were playing on Wednesday nights and performing on Saturday nights. And I didn't feel that same we when I was at work. And I didn't like it because I thought I should be creative every day. I think we all should be creative every day including today. How many of you are terrified I'm about to call you up here right now? Now I know who to call on. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that because I feel like we all have choices we are allowed to make and one of the choices is not to be up here today. So, um, I uh, lost my place in my slides. Okay, so it doesn't do much sense to do this presentation without doing a little demonstration of what improv looks like, right? How many of you have seen an improv show of some sort? So you have a little bit of an idea? Okay. Um, we're going to play a game. We're going to warm up and get our creative muscles going. So I did ask for a volunteer beforehand, but are there any volunteers before I pull my volunteer? Does anybody want to anybody wanna volunteer? Okay, come on up. Woohoo! <laughs> Bravery, I love it. You are going to rock this. Because guess what? I've got your back. That's what we're going to do. So what is your name? April. Hi, April. I'm Amber. Nice to meet you. We're friends now. Come for pancakes. Are you live in Phoenix? Yes. Awesome. I have my first pancake date from WordPress. I actually make really good waffles, too. I'm, I'm all for all breakfast food, but I, you're going to have to try my cinnamon swirl with butter, buttermilk uh, syrup tastes like frosting, it's not. Anyway, um, okay, so we're gonna play a game right now called the alphabet game. And the alphabet game, the purpose is we're gonna have a conversation, we're gonna set a scene. So somebody shout out a place that we're at that's not here. We're at the hospital. So the way the game goes is April and I are gonna have a conversation at the hospital. I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna start with the letter A, whatever I say, so I'm gonna start with A. You're gonna do B, C, back and forth. Got it? We're going to help you out. The object is to have fun, right? That's the object of everything. So we're going to have a conversation. Now, just don't deny anything I say. Accept it as truth and add to it. That's the secret. And it's, it's harder than it looks, but we're going to give it a shot, okay? April, are you okay? But I just, I just, w I just wanted to fall down the cliff. Cliffs? You jumped off of cliffs? Were you diving? Diving? No, I was, I was looking to drown. Everybody, did you hear that? April was trying to drown. I'm really worried about you. For the love of God, please. Just, just let me go. Golly, April, we just became friends. If I let you go, then we'll never have pancakes. 
oh, heck, Amber, I just, I just really, really just wanted waffles. I'll make waffles. I promise I'll make waffles. Just don't jump again. Jumping was fun, though. Okay. <laughs> what was the goal of jumping? Love. Men, huh? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. Never did I see such an amazing man. Okay. Okay. Can you, can you tell me about him? It's harder than it looks. <laughs> potentially, potentially the, the maid of my life. I Quite spectacular. I don't know. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you see, a big hit round of applause for April. I don't know if I'm gonna if I broke it. You can go sit down. Thank you. Thank you for being a good sport. Oh, it did come back on. It's a lot harder than it looks, but it's one of those muscles that the more you do it, the easier it gets. That was amazing. First time, yes. So, it's one of the ways that you flex your creative muscles is by using it. I've played that game a thousand times. I have some tricks for remembering where I'm at in the alphabet. I um, still forget where I'm at in the alphabet sometimes. It happens. I have tricks for the words that are the hard letters. I've, I've learned those things because I've, I've, I've done it so many times. That muscle is really strong in my brain and in my creative, in my creative set. Um, so... Uh, we're going to talk about the rules, but we're going to start at the bottom because I don't actually like rules. I have a lot of issues with rules in general. I feel like you should know the rules so you know how to break them. However, <laughs> except for now, today, these rules that I'm making up are the most important rules of your life, ever. So a large part of my job gets um, involves getting people who don't feel like they're creative to get to the heart of their creative problems so we can help them find creative solutions, but they have to be part of the creative solution. I can't build a concept for a brand without knowing the brand, and I don't know the brand as well as the CEO knows the brand, or the people who've been in the middle of it for a year or two. So um, you have to be able to involve people in the creative process themselves. It's the same when you're building an internal creative team. Our job is to come to the best idea. Um, we know from experience that when we're all working together, we come to better ideas. How many of you have ever had the best idea of your, of your life and shared it with somebody who immediately went, that is amazing. What if you also did? And then they elevate it to another level. Has anybody else ever had that happen or is that just me? A few of you, like that's how creativity happens, right? When ideas collide and they build better and bigger ideas. Um, so in business often, it can feel like there's a lot of ownership and it can feel like it's a competition to come up with the best idea. And so the, the, one of the challenges that I had in business was that my creative team wasn't very collaborative. Um, and it was, there was a lot of throwing people under the bus and typical business bullshit. Um, and so for me, going to improv every week, I was on a stage with people who were there to make me look funny. And there's nothing I like better than somebody who makes me look funny, um, except for maybe pancakes. Um, so we had to flip the script on most business corporate settings. So on the, on, the, on the screen, or on the, sorry, on the stage, it's not about being funny, it's about making your team member be funny. So one of the things you do when you have a, a team that practices together a lot is you get to know each other. So you know where each other's strengths are. You know where each other's weaknesses are. You can set people up, the guy who has a great Scottish accent, you can set him up to surprise and delight the crowd with his accent out of the middle of nowhere by asking him how Scotland was. Did I say Scottish or Irish? I don't know. Whichever one. So then um, what you're doing is you're helping him win. You're helping him 
have the, get the last laugh. When your team is doing their best to support you, it being funny, you have the same advantage because they do it in reverse for you. And what happens is everybody's funnier when they're all working together. Now, eh, okay, so the problem on the corporate level is that often this doesn't happen. So how can you do that in your own businesses, in your own creative col collaboration sessions? How can you instill that culture where you're at, where you support each other, you have each other's back, and you help each other be funny? or creative, or win, building a team, a team of collaboration. This is one of the cornerstones of our company, um, is that we are a we, we're not an I, we're not independent, we function as a group, and we function as a core, with ourselves, with each other, with our clients. Um, when we, we pull in a lot of freelancers, we function as a group. And that way, when I succeed, my partner succeeds. When my graphic designer succeeds, we all succeed. When the client's happy, everyone's winning. So the third, the third rule um, is there are no wrong answers. How would you like to have had this be a rule when you were in school, <laughs> right? We learn very, very fast not to take risks. Very, very fast. You learn you have to use the right colors, you have to color inside the lines. You have to learn to follow the rules that are set out for you. There are some reasons to have rules and stuff. Two plus two has got to equal four most of the time. Um, however, in the creative process, when you are garnered by rules and you have guardrails and you have to, you're so wrong about, so worried about failing, then you miss the big opportunities. Um, I love this quote that creativity comes from the freedom to fail. And failure is a bad word. <laughs> I don't like it because failure is actually opportunity in disguise. That's what failure is. If you never take any chances, if you never take any risks, if you never fall on your face, you'll never fly. You'll never jump off that cliff and fall in love. It'll never happen because you're not going to take any risks. Um, on the improv stage, there are no wrong answers. You can say anything you want to say. And your team has got your back, right, rule number four, and they're going to support you. They're going to accept what you're going to say, and they're going to help you move forward. Um, the bigger the risk, the bigger the, the, bigger the magic at the other end of the, the, other end of the the cliff. I lost my words for a minute. That happens sometimes. Um, we're really, really good at stopping ideas. Our own, other people's, we're really good at stopping them because they're scary and they're terrifying. And the bigger idea and the bigger the risk, the more scary and the more terrifying that it is. Um, but if you don't ever explore, you're never going to win. So there's the important, the important rule of there are no wrong answers for a couple reasons. It allows for exploration. You don't, start, you don't start with no. You don't start with, that's the wrong answer. You start with, huh, what if? And then you explore the idea. And it gets you places you never would have been before. Because other people's brains are the most fascinating places to explore, if they'll let you. Um, and I mean, in a not creepy, like, Jack the Ripper kind of a way. Or whoever was at eight brains, or a zombie way, right? Um, but often, our mind makes connections before we see them. Um, I'm in the middle of this huge research study right now with one of our clients about making decisions when you don't have any answers and you don't know the, you don't know the solution. So predicting the future. And um, he's doing it with math because he's an actuary. I'm doing it with brain cognition because that's a lot more interesting. And um, doing a lot of research and a lot of studying. And one of the things when you study um, anthropology and um, evolution and all of that kind of stuff, brain science, is that we've evolved to make connections and see things before we even know we're seeing them. That's why your gut is usually right when you don't like somebody um, or when something seems off because we're really, really tuned into those bad signals. When you allow yourself to explore ideas, you'll find connections that aren't there. But if you stop exploring before you even get started, then the magic never happens. And we're all about magic. That's what we're looking for right now. Um, it can be a launching place for somebody else to take hold of your idea and make it grow bigger. And also, many times, our first instinct is correct. And if you have to explain your instinct before you can have the idea, then you're not going to progress. Because often it takes you a couple days of thinking about it. That's the other creative magic, is you do the painful process, you bang your head against the wall, and you bang your head against the wall, and then you stop. And everybody goes home, and everybody takes a shower, because that's where the best ideas happen. Somebody will figure it out. It'll happen. Um, one of the biggest gifts of improv training is the ability to think quickly, and the ability to speak without thinking. Um, some of us are born with that gift. <laughs> and it gets us in a lot of trouble. Um, sometimes though, uh, when you can have that fully formed before, 
blah, 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 blah. I just rewound that because that didn't make any sense at all. So when you can speak without thinking, though, then that's the first instinct, and that's what you get to act on. So um, we were going to play a game, but we have 10 minutes. So if we have time, we'll come back to this game, and it's called Three Things. So um, keep that in mind. If not, we can play in the hall afterwards. It's a really fun game. So now number two is this can feel contradictory when you're speaking without thinking, right? The key to doing that, though, is by listening. So if I'm having a conversation with you, Mark, and I'm having a conversation and you're telling me something, you can tell when I'm not listening, can't you? It's really obvious. We all like to pretend like nobody can tell when we're not listening. But it's like, yeah, Mark, that's really interesting. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, like, doing my grocery list in my head or I'm thinking, you know, writing dirty lyrics to songs that I know. Like, things like that. And you would just, it's, it's obvious. On stage, when you're doing improv, you can tell when somebody isn't listening. It's painfully obvious. And what happens with a lot of stand-up comedians when they get on stage is they're writing jokes. So I can, I can see, I'm like, okay, we're in this scene, and you're doing this, and you're probably going to do this. If I say this punchline, I'll get the biggest laugh. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do. And then the whole scene fails because I wasn't listening because people aren't that predictable. And so we're going to, especially, especially improv performers are not that predictable. You're going to think they're going to say left, and they're going to say purple, and then you're just screwed. Because your joke doesn't make any sense. Um, so listening to, to listen versus listening to hear and to understand is a skill we all need to work better on. And our creative teams, as we learn to listen and slow down and really hear what somebody's trying to say and understand and ask the questions to make sure we're hearing and understanding is how we build stronger teams. Um, so, oh, sorry. I'm like getting ahead of myself and backwards and forwards and all the things. So when you're on stage or you're in a creative brainstorming session, um, you can't have somebody's back if you're not listening to what they have to say. That's really the key to, number to, the, to this rule, is that you're breaking another rule when you're not doing it correctly. Um, and you can't add to the scene if you don't know what's going on in the scene. I'm telling you, it's all about magic and unicorns and rainbows. That's what creativity should feel like. It should feel fun and exciting. So when setting up brainstorms, especially with clients, um, we warn them that it's going to be super awkward. And I just start, actually, I start most of my relationships and conversations with people that way. I'm just let you know I'm super awkward. I say really dumb things a lot of the times. And I make jokes that people don't think are funny. And then I try to make up for it with pancakes. It's just a thing that I do. Um, and it works most of the time. And when it doesn't, I try harder next time. I don't know. Anyway. So we warned it's going to be awkward, and we were on a phone call with a client. They're in New York and Seattle, and we're on the phone, and we're brainstorming. It's an hour and a half long conversation. And at one point, and we warned them. We said, this is going to be awkward. We're going to make you think, <laughs> and we're not going to answer all of your questions. We're going to ask a lot of questions in return. And um, for people who don't function in that way all the time, it can, be, it can be super awkward. And at one point, the CEO of this company, she's like, this just feels so weird. Why does this feel so weird? And I said, because I'm not talking. And what you're used to having happen is you say something and I respond. Immediately, I respond. I don't want to know what I have to say. I already know what I have to say in this situation. I want to hear the third thing you're going to say. The third thing you're going to say. I want to know what that is. And if I talk over the top of you, I have no idea what that third thing is. Because the third thing is typically where the magic happens. The first idea isn't where you win. It's the third. If you let somebody get to the third idea, I promise you'll have this. And rainbows and butterflies and unicorns will happen. Um, and it's awkward, and it's OK. So the most commonly known rule of improv is yes and, which is why I did it backwards, because I wanted you guys to feel like you already knew what was coming. So you're welcome. Um, it's a gift, actually. So yes and is a gift. When somebody is creating something out of nothing, and they offer you something, right, the chocolates, you accept them. When you're in a creative brainstorm and somebody comes up with an idea out of nowhere, you accept it. And then you build on it. So that's the, that's the and. The and is the hard part. Um, it allows, the, it allows the, the scene to move forward on the improv stage. This is like the most awkward movie ever, and I love it because it feels like my childhood. Um, so on stage, 
how would you feel if you were up here and, and I'm like, so we're at the hospital. No, we're not. Okay, so how are you doing today? I'm not here. Like, it, when you stop the scene, right, that's how it feels. It's awkward. How many, how many of you have been at a creative brainstorming session where somebody throws out an idea, and the first thing somebody says is say why it won't work? Yeah. Every single one of us has been there, right? How many of you have had the thought in your head, this is never going to work, but you don't say it, and then it seems to work, and then you're like, I'm so glad I didn't say anything? That happens to me all the time. Um, usually when my kids have some great hair-schemed hair idea, I've learned to just accept it and go with it. Um, I can say that about a lot of things in my life, actually. But um, and parenting, it's a life tip. Just say yes and see what happens. Um, and I have really good health insurance. Um, but on creative teams, when you have to defend every single thing you have to say, it's no longer collaborative, it's combative. And that's what you want to do when you're building teams, is make sure that you're working together to build bigger ideas. You're not competing and fighting. So that's back to rule number four, right? So we're working together to make it happen. Um, and I'm going to read you this quote, even though it's against all of the rules of all of the things of presenting, because this is one of the books I've been reading about thinking fast. So allowing people to operate with, without having to explain themselves constantly turns out to be like the rule of agreement in improv. It enables rapid cognition. So if I don't have to explain myself, if you, you just say yes, and then you add on it, we build a bigger idea. Because we're thinking so fast, we don't have to explain ourselves yet. So that's part of the, uh, the agreement. But it's also, part of, it's also part of the previous rule too, right? To listen, and all ideas are good ideas, and working together. But it's also, um, good ideas can come from anywhere. And this is one of the things that I've been really working on lately too, is the idea of diversity in groups and diversity of thought, and making sure that we have diverse ideas in a room. Um, and so I ran a team of, of, I was in charge of our interns for a couple of years, and it was my, one of my favorite things I ever did. So there's this, this group of kids who are so enthusiastic, and they're so excited, and they are a target demographic for two-thirds of our client base at the agency I was at. And we have them in a room, and I told them, speak up, say what you're thinking, join the conversation, your creative ideas are valuable. And I tried to train the nymph gnome as much as I could before I sent them off into the world to have it beaten out of them because they hadn't had enough experience. Um, good ideas come from everywhere. When you accept somebody's idea and you add to it, then you're, you're collaborating together and you're raising everybody to a, to a greater, greater height and a greater strength and a better team and better ideas. I think differently than you think. You think differently than you think. And you think differently than you think. We all have different experiences, different ideas. When we all collaborate in a room and everyone has a voice, then we have the idea to build magical, beautiful things. Sunshine, rainbows, unicorns. I swear, it's going to happen someday. Um, I had a, a, a teammate, a colleague, who was the best at this. And she actually taught me this lesson in a way that I've never seen it done before in a room. And it's every single collaborative brain session we, brainstorm we would have Every idea was a good idea. She is the queen of yes and. Um, and so I would say something and she would be, that is a really interesting idea. I really like that. She would, start, she would frame almost every conversation with that, every response. It would be a positive affirmation of what she said. And what if we also did, so she's not denying what I said, because that's a tricky thing people do sometimes. Oh, that's really interesting. What if, and then they have a different idea. And then you're just like, well, that was denial, even though it was tri tricky denial. So that's the secret, too, is to make sure that you're accepting and you're moving the team forward, but you're doing it in a way that's genuine and real. So that's a really interesting idea. I really like that. What if we also, and then build as you go? Um, so just to recap, the rules of both improv and creative brainstorming and collaboration, yes and, listen to listen, don't listen to speak. There are no wrong answers, and I've got your back. When we work together as a team, that's when the magic happens. And um, I'm really sad we don't have time to play more games, but if you want to come over for pancakes, send me an email. We'll play improv games. We'll have a great time. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, I think we have like 30 seconds. So. Right. Yes. How do you play three things? Okay, so the way you play three things is you can have as many people as you want. And I say, um, I'm gonna say, I have, what's your name? 
Julie has three things in the trunk of her car. And then and then Julie and so then Julie has to say three things. So what are three things in the trunk of Julie's car? A body, a shovel, and a bicycle pump. And what we do is we as we do those thi things, everybody goes, so we say the first thing, and everybody goes, one. And then she says the second thing, and we all go, two. And we say the third thing, and we all go, three. And then it goes to the next person. But it's a cadence like this. And so the key is, is like, I have three things in my pocket. I have one, two, guitar pick, three. And then the next person. And then I say, you have three things in your refrigerator. And then so you just go, it's a way of doing it without thinking. So it's just like, there are no wrong answers. You're listening, and you're just, you're saying the first thing you think of. And it's really fun, because I'm a nerd. But it's really fun. Any other questions? To someone that's introverted? Okay, so this is actually, I am a super, super extrovert, clearly. Um, and when I did improv, I was surprised how many introverts were on our team. And so my secret is to go and try it. That is my best tip. You will not know how it feels till you're there, but what happens is you're building a safe space. So improv rehearsal feels like um, a misnomer or an oxymoron. I'm gonna go practice improv right now. But what happens is you're building a team. And so it's the same as practicing cl cr um, collaboration as a team. Practice ideation, practice creativity. So when you're on a team, um, you're gonna go with your team once a week and you're gonna rehearse for three hours and you're gonna play games with your friends. That is my favorite part of improv, is like I would go and hang out with my friends and play games once a week. And then on the weekends, I go play games in front of a bunch of people. And they would laugh most of the time. And so um, for if you're introverted and you're interested, I'm going to say try it. Um, I, know I, there's a, there's like, I can think of three clubs off the top of my head that have a weekly drop-in night if you just want to try it. Um, and if you want to know, send me an email, grab me afterwards, and I can give you whatever one's on your side of town. But um, that's my... But that's my life tip for everything, is just try it and see what happens. Um, mine is jumping off cliffs. <laughs> Unless you have a parachute or a hang glider or there's water at the bottom. Yeah, there are, well, I don't know about meetups, like there's formalmeetup.com, but there are drop-in improv classes. So I g there's like three different comedy clubs I can think of that have, like for public, and then you can just go drop in and they'll teach you the basics and you can try it out. So Catch me afterwards, and I'll point you in the right direction. Anyone else? I think we're I think we're out of time. Thank you so much.